Hello you beautiful legends and welcome to Blunt Force Healing Podcast. This is episode number 537 and this is our fourth day on Gran Canaria but obviously my updates are a little bit a little bit <laughs> a little bit behind so today's topic is about point of no return and uh, the title that I came up with after our two walks or two hikes to a nearby spot in Mogan where we were at the moment as you can see we are in a much quieter place in Maspalamas already so we left Mogan after four days there and uh, the next four days we are spending here and we are departing from uh, Las Palmas on Tuesday but for now I just wanted to talk to you about the particular place that we kind of discovered uh, early on uh, I discovered it on the map but I wanted to see it with my own eyes and it happened I believe on the second day that we first managed to go there with Julian so basically what I'm talking about there's no name for that spot as far as I know unless locals in Mogan can tell something about it or you know uh, provide some local name for it but basically as I explained in one of the episodes on Gran Canaria, especially between Mogan and Las Palmas, there is a, I believe it's called GC1, so it's a motorway. And that motorway ends in Mogan and it turns into like a national road, so I would say a second grade um, road. And in between the coastal towns, there are also national road like. Mm, routes so basically you can either go the fast route between uh, bigger bigger towns uh, via motorway or basically you can choose the slower route uh, via coastal roads in between the towns and back in the days between Morgan and I believe Tauro or Taurito there was a road that was uh, leading basically up the mountain because Mogan is in the, in the valley. So it was going on the side of the mountain and then it was basically going over the cliff side and back into Taurito. But at some stage, and again, I don't know exactly what year it was or when did it happen, but there was a huge rockfall and the cliff face basically fell and completely destroyed the road at the very edge of that cliff. And I believe there is no way, at least with the current state of affairs I would say all or the technology uh, or engineering and also the funds and budget for it there is no easy way to rebuild that road so what happened is that basically that road got closed there is a I would say about two and a half to three meters wall uh, at the top near that uh, cliff that uh, fell off and then more than a kilometer I believe about kilometer and 250 meters down that road there is also a blockage or kind of stop sign that uh, basically warns you to not trespass because it's dangerous and because you might be actually prosecuted if you you break the law if you keep going and 
on Tuesday when we uh, were in Mogan and my wife had a session with her client on a video, we left with Julian to spend some time and just get around Mogan. And I came up with idea, hey, let's just go there and see how far we can get with the car. Can we actually go up there or is it, is it closed or whatever? And we got to the Mogan pitch where the football players are or soccer players are training. And obviously the road was kind of semi-closed. Uh, there, is, there was a small segment where people were just parking the cars and then you could still kind of use one lane and go a little bit up, probably about 150 to 200 meters. But then there was like a hard close. There were like concrete blocks put down so the car cannot pass and a huge sign saying that you will be prosecuted if you trespass it. And the first thought was, like, we are that close and the road looks fine. So, and it's, it is still daylight. So why don't we just walk there? Especially that we saw two cars and it seemed like somebody was there. And then we saw some tourists coming down. So we decided that we should probably check that out until it's obviously safe. And Julian was a little bit anxious and said that he doesn't want to be prosecuted but I explained to him like that uh, he's too young first to be prosecuted and second uh, if something happens to me it's more likely that I will just pay some fine and not end up in jail or anything like that so he shouldn't be worried and obviously I don't want to risk anything so we can just go as far as we think it's safe and come back so he agreed and we went there, we met a couple more tourists along the way and locals as well. So there was probably about seven to nine people that we passed along the way. And it was exactly one kilometer and 250 meters. I know that because when we went forth and back, I measured that with Strava and it turned out to be about two and a half kilometers walk so it's a very interesting kilometer roughly of of a hike up hill and there are about two turns and there is actually one spot when another rock fall happened and there are holes in the road and blocks rock blocks of rock or i would say you know boulders uh in certain areas like the broken boulders and then there is a uh, one of the railings that were kind of protecting cars from going off the cliffs i would say probably about 50 meters of it are completely destroyed or kind of pushed down the hill so they no longer protect the side of the road but the side of the road is uh, you know unprotected and they just hang down and they were literally kind of torn away off the concrete or the asphalt whatever was holding them so it must have been quite a serious rockfall and what I wonder is if anything else happens like that there are houses down there not not far from the from the slope so it's a very dangerous place to live in to be honest but i think those houses are more of a holiday homes or kind of hotel things and i'm pretty sure it's monitored so they know if some something might be dangerous there they will probably address that by let's say locking the area for for a while and assessing the situation i don't know but we went there along the way there were a couple of weird and creepy things like there was a an office chair uh, tied with a chain to the to one of the railings 
uh, on the road, but it was in the in the scenic spot, so you could actually watch the Morgan and uh, the bay, uh, the ocean. So it was strange sighting. Later on, beside those railing was also the a suitcase, like the travel suitcase, and then also there was a mannequin, half mannequin, standing on the on the kind of regular shop stand uh, thingy. Uh, dressed a little bit and uh, looking at people walking down that road so it, it 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 was quite a i would say creepy sighting especially that nobody lives there or anything like that and then once we reached the almost the end about 50 meters before or even less than 50 meters there is another blockage with actual fencing but there is space for a person to go through and we went to the very top it's a beautiful view especially uh, during the sunset you can you can view the ocean morgan and it's an amazing breathtaking view and there was a guy there uh, probably one of the locals but he had headphones so he didn't hear us and he was just kind of listening to something or doing something on the phone there was a little kind of chihuahua dog with him and it immediately came up to us and we were able to pet it it was very cute and julian was super happy and then when we returned home and told elizabeth about it the next day we actually took elizabeth after one of our trips and visited that place together three of us so she could see and she also enjoyed it especially as it was just about sunset the lovely pastel colors uh, were, you know, covering the bay area and the mountains. And later on, the Mogan was lit up with, uh, you know, the usual kind of street lights, etc. So it was a nice view. So that was the point of no return, really. If if you go across it, I'm pretty sure you can't you can't return from there. Uh, that was my take on the title of today's podcast episode and the blog post. So that's it for today. Mm. I hope you have a great rest of the day, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Thank you very much for tuning in. Stay safe, stay tuned and see you tomorrow.